just said, someday we hope to sell it and we'd, we'd like to get a million dollars each. And when we do that, we're going to retire and we'll be, we'll be done. So in 1963, Ray is going to give them a million dollars each mm -hmm. and a million dollars in 1963. A lot of money. It's a lot of money. And uh, banks wouldn't give them a loan. There was an attorney somewhere near where Ray was having a conversation with this banker and, and overheard enough to where he stopped Ray outside the bank and said, tell me, can I, can I ask you, tell, tell me about what it is you're trying to do. And he, he ends up having a meeting. This guy's name was Harry Sonneborn. He was a, a young attorney. And he said, he's explaining to Ray, this is not a good business. You're getting, you're getting 1.9% of a franchise fee this isn't sustainable. And you got, he had a 10-year contract mm -hmm. with McDonald's Brothers. So he said, tell me about the land. And uh, he said, what do you mean? He says, well, who owns the land? He says, the, the franchisees, we, you know, uh, they're buying the franchise rights, but they'll find the property and then they're going to build the building and so on and so forth. And he said, well, that's your, that's your mistake. You're in the, you think you're in the wrong business. You're, you're not in the hamburger business. You're in the real estate business. So he said, you need to buy the property and then lease the property to the franchisee. Franchisee is going to pay that lease. It's, a, it's, a, 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 it's an eternal lease. It's, they never own the land. They own the building. And that plan at McDonald's is, still exists. It's a, it's a base rent. A so McDonald's, McDonald's currently, yeah. someone owns the McDonald's franchisee or a franchise a franchise franchisee owns the building and the equipment but not the land but not the land still to this day right unless you have like my grandfather my grandfather was an early franchisee my grandfather owned his own land so the uh, there's not very many of those folks uh, left so there might be a handful um, but uh, so so when that happened Ray formed um, a McDonald's a real estate company, a, a separate company, uh, because he didn't need the McDonald's brothers involved in this because these people were buying their mm -hmm. own land. So he's the one that developed the, the real estate system along with Harry Sonneborn. So now the, 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 the lease of the land, that money is going to Ray, to Ray's company. Wow. And, and then he's, he's bringing in more money than the McDonald's brothers are bringing in. So he then had the power and offered to buy them out. They said no. He um, he was able to get the money from the bankers because they'll loan you money for real estate. They won't loan you money for a restaurant. So when when they, they saw the fl income flow that was going to be created, he bought the McDonald's brothers out uh, for a million dollars, actually a million two each, but a million dollars after taxes. Um, in 1963. So in essence, oh, that's why I, I say the McDonald's brothers did not get screwed over. The McDonald's brothers got paid $1.2 million gross each for one single successful restaurant. The, the, their franchise attempt um, did not work. Um, so McDonald's, as we know it, it was created by Ray Kroc, he simply honored their system and their name. And they never got – so when he, when they sell the restaurant and Ray Kroc purchase it, does Ray pay royalties to them or it's nothing? No. There were ne never royalties. He got – they got until they sold – until they sold uh, when Ray bought them out. They had a half a percent of the McDonald's Corporation. I mean, so certainly – They'd have been better off. Their heirs would have been better off, not selling sure. Ray and keeping the half half percent. But the um, so that was again when I would write a paper about one of the greatest business decisions in history was a million two right. uh, to each of the McDonald's sure. brothers to to get back a half percent share of what became the McDonald's Corporation. So. Fortune 500 company. The restaurant your family had. What happened to that? And did Ray visit that site or help you guys? Or so that that um, that will 
that story will help uh, explain the relationship between my grandfather and, okay. and Ray. And your grandfather, you're talking about Ray's sister's husband? Yes. Okay. okay. So so Hank Grow, Hank and Lorraine, Lorraine Grow. So my grandparents, um, because growing up, again, because I'm the oldest, I got more of a chance to spend time with my granddad, and, and he would tell me stories. I know he told me stories so that I could tell them. Sure. to my siblings and to my cousins. And and um, I've never really done it in a format like this. Most people, only because I know you personally, most, sure. most people have no idea about the, the Ray Kroc thing because I'm very proud of what my father and my grandparents, what my mom and dad and what my grandparents accomplished. The um, So my grandfather was an accountant uh, for J.L. Craft in Chicago. Um, they had lived in, in uh, Oak Park, um, you know, as did Ray. Ray was still in Oak Park when he began uh, McDonald's. The um, my grandfather had issues with Ray. You know, kind of his get rich quick schemes, well documented uh-huh. in the in the movie, um, accurate again. And um, he he didn't think Ray was very dependable because when my great grandmother uh, Ray's mom uh, got sick. She stayed with my grandma and my grandpa, who were um, in, in no huge financial, you know, position. Uh, Ray didn't help, didn't visit, so my grandfather did not think a great deal of him. But as I got older, I remember asking my grandpa, "You always talk about how you don't respect, you know, Uncle Ray, but um, why would you have gone into business with a man you didn't respect?" And he said, uh, I don't respect him, but I, I knew the business <laughs> was he, – he had finally, after years of, of failing, to, uh, to find that one thing. This was a great business model. Sure. And, and he's an accountant, so he, he, he knew how to run the numbers. He, he worked for J.L. Craft at, the, at an executive level, really from the time he graduated from the University of Illinois – Another reason why the two of them didn't get along. Uh, my grandfather valued education, and Ray didn't. Um, so when my grandfather um, chose to to pursue a franchise um, with his brother-in-law, who he didn't really love, he left Craft uh, after thirty years. As in Craft, uh, as in the like jail craft, dressing, like no, like jail craft, wow. like uh, che- the craft cheese, and wow, and um, and he worked for. Mr. Kraft. <laughs> so when he when he left, you know, that's a hard thing to do. And in your probably he was probably fifty. Right? So how how many franchises are, are are there right now, you think, at this at this time when in, he's leaving in Kraft? Worldwide? When he's leaving Kraft. Oh, 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 less than a hundred, maybe seventy. And so Kraft's probably like, why are you leaving yes. me to go to that? Yeah, he his he he looked at at Mr. Kraft as a mentor, as a father figure. And thought because he was going to open his own business, he would get patted on the back. And he, I think he told me, Mr. Praft and his boss, uh, his direct boss, had told him, um, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you're wondering why I'm pointing my fingers like this, it's because momentarily a video is going to pop up here and here that you can enjoy watching. Please like and subscribe to this channel, as well as turn your notifications on. My mom would really appreciate it.